Ugga, 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 ugga. Oh, we're back at it again. I thought I'd better explain what, uh, what I am doing here. Well, at the moment, with this gear train set up, which it came with, okay, a couple of these spare ones and all this you can change around to give a, a different feed rate. The minimum feed rate that I can get is 40 thou per revolution. So if I turn that chuck there one full revolution, okay, this carriage here, can you see that, that there, will move this way towards the chuck through this shaft 40 thou which is one mil one mil it will run so if you are machining a piece of steel that is a big uh, chunk of metal that you are taking off so what I've had, had, had to do is look at the gear uh, the uh, gear train okay and see what I had to do well by looking at this here, this is a 20 tooth and this is a 40 tooth or 45 tooth or whatever. Or well, is it a 60 tooth? Uh, sorry, it's 60 tooth. So, uh, so if this rotates one uh, full revolution, this will only rotate one third the f feed, uh, one third the distance because it's a 60 tooth as opposed to 22 so the distance is much shorter so you're quickly uh, uh, downgrading the thing here but the only problem is I transmit the speed through to this and what I get is the feed is not changing anymore I can't reduce it anymore because this is roughly around about the same size so what I've had to do is introduce a new setup and that which means making new gears and that's what I'm doing at the moment now the gear I'm going to make we're in the process of getting close to making now is a 6 and 3 8 tooth 16 dpi 100 tooth um, gear cutter where these are 60 so we've got I've got another 40 teeth on this so that's so we reduce it from there to there you, you reduce it by one third the, the the feed rate. Then from there to there, that's twenty to a hundred. That is uh, twenty to hundred divided out is one fifty 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 times slower. So that will give us uh, roughly. We're calculating that all out. It'll give you about five to six hour feed per revolution that this will travel along. Hopefully. My calculations are right. That will what will happen. So uh, I'll show quickly. Okay, you see this red dot here, red mark, and we've got a dial indicator there. So when this red dot comes to the top again, we'll see how much it has travelled. This dial indicator is in thousands of an inch. If I zero that there. Zero now. I'm going to do one revolution. So we watch this there. And at the same time, if I can get the dial indicator in. Let's go. Sorry for wobbling around, but I have to do my best. Right, there we are. Red marks on top again. And we have got 40 thou registered on the uh, dial face of 0 to 40. I'll use my chopstick, might be a better idea. Zero. 
around a 40 okay there it is that's how much uh movement would get in one revolution which is not acceptable that's one millimeter so by changing a few things around which i'll show you now take this off here if we put this on here okay and make the adjustments i can't show you the difference in all this but you can if you think about it this is what's going to happen so you get one third of distance change here that will travel which gives you roughly 40 there but then we're going to reduce it from 20 to 100 which is uh, divide down as 150th so it will change it down by approximately 50 uh, um, uh, parts you do your calculations and all that you can see it'll be around about five or six there which I don't want any more than I think it can handle five or six there okay I think I've uh, sort of explained it um, in a way and that's the reason why I'm doing it so with this set up okay I will uh, definitely uh, be trying that out and hopefully it works fine going to take me 17 hours to cut these I expect it to be something like that can't push it too much bouncing around too much to cut it.
Yo, all finished. Looks all right. Looks good. You always worry about these things. Are they going to mesh up? Well, they do. Because I've already tried it with the little small cog and it runs around nicely. That's enough for now. Okay, finished the gear, cleaned it up, they put it back onto the gear train, well put it on the gear train for the first time, set the gears up, set the, uh, set the uh, dial indicator up to zero, and engage the feed screw which is up the other end of the machine, it's not on the not on the apron here and we'll see right see what it does after one turn how far it will travel on here the dial indicator is in uh, thousands thousands of an inch okay we're off we're halfway we've got three and a half there, so we know it's going to be seven. So there you go. So travel seven thousand. So I'm a little bit out of my calculation by two thousand. <clears throat> before I go any further, before I make any more gears, I will uh, I will machine up a bit of steel see if we can handle it uh, if it's okay at that speed. Could be because it's in run revolution. I remove. Seven thou. If not, I have to cut another gear, which I would say would be about. Just hang on a moment. Four and a half inches. This one here is four. It's a strange size. It's not even four and a quarter. I suppose it should be four and a quarter, but I'll go four and a half anyway, and that'll give us easily what I want. We'll see first. Okay. Let's see what 7th hour per revolution does. There's a cut. We'll put a bit on. Start it. Engage the feed. See if you can notice it moving. Nice curly swarf. It's taken about a mil cut there, so that's uh, pretty good. We'll pull it out. Alright. it off. We're quite happy with that. I'll just be closer to the swarf. Curly swarf. It's not a brilliant finish, uh, there's a lot of chatter marks in it. Uh, I didn't run any uh, WD-40 on that then, but um, I'm pretty happy with that. I think, you know, that is, I think that's two inch steel, okay. So I have to run at a very slow speed. 
but at least I'm not doing it all by hand now. At least I can, I'm not turning the feed screw by hand. I can use the mechanism and just relax my hands a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, and the plan has come together. Arnie, the lathe is affectionately called now. <clears throat> recreates its own body parts and um, thank you to Kirk for giving it that name it's uh, quite impressive so actually that is the conclusion of the uh, rebuild of this uh, the keen lathe firstly I, I have got other things to do I, to make I can I've got another 12 blanks that I can do. I'm going to see if I can cut a thread. I don't think I can with this uh, setup. Yeah, you've got to have a lead screw. This is a feed screw, so yeah, it won't work. Anyway, it's got too much back play for me. But I didn't, I don't have this lathe for making threads or anything like that. All the threads that I have done have been pen all the live threads I'm talking about this one here which is uh, three quarter thread three quarter thread and you can see these brass pins that I put through because they're not load bearing really you know what I mean they they nip up but you're not gonna damage them same with the other end you can see the pins I'll put her in there it's opposite opposites and um, that should be good enough and that's what takes up the time we have to go and do all the extra machining to fit those threaded uh, bar uh, threaded pieces to your stock anyway all the best thank you very much for watching my videos and uh, Hope to catch you in the future. Maybe make up model ca cannons. That'll be an interesting thing to film. How I went about it, how I've made them up, or how I designed them. Now for a model tool ship I'm going to build, uh, hopefully build, in my lifetime, <laughs> the way things are going a bit slow. But it it is a 148 scale of the bounty, and everything is going to be for uh, original drawings, and uh, whew, that was going to be a large job. But of course, I've got the horses still going too. All right, heaps of work to do. Thank you. Bye.